So at the very least, let's agree that artificial intelligence is changing the world and that the pace of change is going to pick up over the next few years. But how quickly? And should we be excited or frightened, optimistic or pessimistic? Let me list some of the possible reactions. First, there are a few AI cynics around. I spoke about ChatGPT to someone recently and they said, oh, it's just a glorified autocomplete programme. My response would be, maybe, but what an extraordinary programme it is. It composes music, creates original artworks, translates languages, corrects your computer coding, writes your dissertation and diagnoses your heart condition. It is autocomplete on steroids. I think that the die-hard cynics have switched off their capacity for wonder. Let's just put them to the side for the moment. Then there are a group of AI sceptics. The sceptics appreciate the huge advances that have been made in AI. They're not cynical, but they think that AI at the moment is in very, very narrow, restricted areas. And they think that we are not on the cusp of artificial general intelligence. And certainly we're not on the cusp of artificial superintelligence. The sceptics emphasise how narrow the current domains of AI are and how many unresolved problems stand between us and the goal of artificial general intelligence. Grady Brooch from IBM, just to take one example, he thinks that it will be not just decades but generations before we get to AGI because computer scientists vastly overestimate our abilities to create AGI and they underestimate the richness and mystery of what it means to be human, according to Bruch and many others. These are the sceptics. They can see what's happened, but they're sceptical about really how quickly it's all going. But finally, there are the AI believers the believers think that AI progress has already become exponential and will continue to do so because of Moore's law. This is how computer power roughly doubles about every two years. And also because AI is already suggesting self-improvements. So the believers think that general intelligence, AGI, is coming soon perhaps in 10, 20, 30 years, some even in this decade. And they say that this means that the probability of artificial superintelligence emerging in our lifetime becomes very, very high. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, that leads to the final distinction in this multifarious AI grouping. This is the distinction between AI optimists and AI pessimists. The optimists underline the potential for good that AGI could bring. If we had general intelligence, this could lead to, for example, the reduction of disease, the em elimination of global poverty, improvements in education and on and on and on. The pessimists, on the other hand, they catastrophize with a small c, about the possible downsides of AI. Mass unemployment, the creation of a surveillance society, autonomous weapons with no accountability. And some of the pessimists, they also catastrophize with a capital C about what's called the singularity, the possibility that an artificial superintelligence with a mind of its own could intentionally or accidentally wipe out the human race. Full stop. There's my summary. So we've got the AI cynics, the AI skeptics, who don't think this is going to go very quickly, and then we've got the two types of AI believers, the optimists and the pessimists. Which group do you fall into? 
There is certainly no agreement in the AI world. And that's really interesting itself, in itself, how much the diversity is of real AI specialists. They completely disagree about what direction things are going in and where we're at. So be careful with which analogy you choose when you're speaking about AI. Is AI like the discovery of electricity? There's some short-term unemployment, but massive upsides for humanity. Or is it like the harnessing of fire? There's the odd disaster, like the Great Fire of London, but we get better food and warmer nights. Or is AI like thermonuclear power? It's got the potential for catastrophic harm, but not if everyone just behaves sensibly. Or is AI like raising a lion cub in your living room? Everything is just fine for the first few months. It drinks your milk and plays with your children. But then you wake up one morning and it has eaten your family for breakfast. The Sorcerer's Apprentice is a very popular story for AI pessimists. Many of you maybe remember the animated version from Disney's Fantasia. Mickey Mouse in that film is the Sorcerer's Apprentice and he puts on his master's cap and casts a spell on a wooden broom to make it do his chores and collect water for the cauldron so he can sit down and do nothing. The haunted broom does fill the cauldron but it fills it to overflowing and it will not stop. When Mickey tries to stop it and then chops it into pieces with an axe, each little piece of the first broom transforms itself into a fully fledged new broom. So there is now an army of uncontrollable broomsticks and a catastrophic flood. The situation is only saved when the sorcerer comes back casts his own counterspell and calmly restores things to order. But here's the question. Which element in this story represents artificial intelligence? Is AI the spell that's cast? Is AI the broom that takes over? Is AI the sorcerer that sorts things out at the end? Or is AI, maybe, Walt Disney himself who has created this whole simulated world?